talking of world titles, a World Cup every two years, very much still on the agenda for FIFA. They held an online summit with its member associations, over 200 associations then getting involved in this one. Um, And as I say, the two-year World Cup still very much something that Gianni Infantino wants to push through. Now, in this summit, they have suggested that they're going to be having a world summit in December where possibly in Qatar is where they're suggesting it will be held. They will vote for this biennial World Cup, which they actually expect to push through as well. Um, Gianni Infantino was asked by a delegate, well, what will happen if a a team doesn't make this now 48-team World Cup that will be happening every two years. They were told, do not worry, because there will be another tournament that you'll be able to take place, that will take place for you to enter into. Um, they were also asked about, well, what happens, um, because obviously the World Cups, as we know, normally takes place in the summer, changed for the Qatar World Cup, which is taking place in December next year. What will happen if a, if a country is awarded a World Cup in a hot climate, for example? Again, they were told, well, yes, they, they might be able to shift the calendar around to accommodate such a World Cup. Biennial World Cup, Martin Keown. I know you were talking about talking about this with us off air. Um, this is something that looks like it's going through, and you're sort of in favour of it. Yeah, because I, I we need this realignment of the of the, the calendars throughout the football world. Um, we've got, I think this this January, we've got the African Nations Cup coming up, where we're going to see a whole host of players disappear from our Premier Leagues. Um, and I sincerely hope that with the biannual World Cup, we don't have that and we have this alignment where they play, you know, we play the Euros every two years and the African Nations Cup and Copper America and all the all other manner of competitions all play in those um, spare summers that are available. And then we get a kind of calendar of uh, for the players. As you know, I'm into this rest period break for the players of guaranteed 25 days, which they're not getting at the moment. Um, and then, of course, Benga's looking at that you know the idea of playing all these fixtures in you know designated months through the season where mm. we sort of wrapper it and say okay you yeah. know there was a month there and a month here and I, I mean we're just going into two more into uh, world cup for, uh, world cup games so we'll end up when we come back to the premier league with seven premier league games and having played five international games so they're all around us and we need to sort of wake it work a little bit better and i think it's you know an open forum is is a good idea whether or not this is all going to actually come out um and be rubber stamped we don't yet know well, but I do think it, it's a very good idea by the sound of it they're very confident by by this summit in December Simon they're going to push mm. this through um, look I, I'm not quite sure why they'd be so confident because I think the, U- U- the European leagues have said they're not, they're not comfortable with it the South Americans have said they're not comfortable with it and the given arguably well not arguably <laughs> factually the best teams the most powerful international teams are in those two federations I don't think it's a done deal they're hardly going to come out suggesting that they're not going to get it through they're going to put their most positive spin on it to influence the people that possibly are sitting on the sidelines suggesting um, that they're not quite sure Um, I I don't understand Martin's point it it makes some sense to me because we've had this discussion before about which is the most arduous tournament football or qualifying football and Martin has advised me that tournament football is more arduous on the players so by playing more tournaments you're going to put more impact upon the players you're going to impact the players by playing more Champions League games so we now have a roster we have a former club manager that I would wage you and Martin might say differently would have had a different attitude when he was a club manager now suggesting a buy in your World Cup is part and parcel of what the players need to have advocating that these th- these tournaments can be moved into October to meet the expectations of where they might be being played so domestic seasons are going to be disrupted left, right and centre and then you've got increased tournaments. You've got European Conference League, Europa League. You've got FIFA World Club Championships on the on the roster. You've got Infantino talking about the idea that don't worry if you don't get into this tournament, there'll be another one coming down the pike pretty soon, another cab off the rank. All of it is being done because FIFA wants to generate more revenue rather than add to the sporting integrity of the game. It just... I, un- I do understand the argument from the player's point of view that coming around twice every year... So not twice every year. Every once every two years gives people an opportunity not to wait for four year cycles. But the Olympics is the greatest show on earth, probably followed by the World Cup. Scarcity and rarity is something that always increases value. And FIFA's idea, I honestly don't believe anyone's naive to believe that FIFA are doing this because of the well being of the players. They're doing it for the finances of the game. And I think it will work to the contrary. You get 15 billion. The reasons why the World Cup is in Mexico and the USA because Donald Trump 
pledged 15 billion worth of revenue for FIFA as a result of that World Cup. And this is what's determining and driving football. And to suggest that something that's that's not broken, that doesn't really need to be fixed, alongside a whole raft of other scheduling, is somehow, for the well-being of the structure of football, evades me. And I don't think it should happen. I've never thought it should. And I don't trust a single sentence or scintilla of information that comes from FIFA. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I do, I do, because Arsene Wenger's there, and I, I trust him entirely. I think he's interested in development of, of but he's there, to, he's there to come up with new ideas. He has to. But you come thought up it was his idea. idea. I don't it's think not it, his idea. Well, it, it, it's never his idea. It wasn't his even idea. If but we had is, the argument two weeks ago. You thought it, it was. Even if it is his idea, it wasn't his idea to build the Emirates Stadium, but it was. He gave it to other people to to hold it and to own it. I don't know whether or not they want to look as well. And you're going to say this is rubbish, but you know this sort of carbon footprint in terms of people travelling all around Europe in huge numbers indiscriminately to different countries, whether we have competitions or whether we go somewhere in those months where we have the qualifications, where everybody's in one place to sort of slow things down a little bit, um, whether that's a, a consideration. Um, I do feel that... We could have a World Cup island, couldn't we? <laughs> yeah, COVID-3. Like Gilligan's free. Island. COVID-3. And the only way you can get off is if you yeah. win through. Exactly. Yeah. I like but that. no, I, I, I like I like the look welfare. of it. I like the look of it. I think Benga's explaining it well. I think he's doing that in the right sort of manner. Um, and let's just see. Let's see if it goes through. I like the competition element. I like the fact that you can but play when... a World Cup every two years instead of waiting for four years. But to, you know, the, I mean, but that, you can see the argument of how it dilutes the World Cup. Wh- wh- why? Tell me why it dilutes. Because every it. two years, every four years, we're used to it. And we know it's every four years. It's a cycle. It's Do like you the, honestly it's like the, feel if it becomes the norm that it in any way take detracts well, course, from the competition? If it becomes the norm, that's different. But right now, as we, as Simon just said, if it's not broke, why do we need to, to fix it? I don't think that's not an argument to do it. I think we want to see the very best players going head to head. But what if There's, the players don't want it? Well, I I quite enjoy the international side of it, where money is sits to one side. And it's about best players coming together. There's something uh, fulfilling about that from a sporting sense context. I like that element and I'd like to see it more often. I really enjoyed the World Cup in, in Russia. I'd like to see it all, all ha- happening again in, in every two years. And I don't like the fact that half the Premier League is going to disappear in January to go and pl- play off in the African nations. I don't think that's sustainable. And we do need to start protecting the players far more than we are. They're not at the table Simon, when it comes to organising fixtures, they're not there when UEFA, FIFA are, are making these fixture lists. And I think this, actually, this is fairness. How, how should they be represented? You've got people like Marco van Basten, ex-player, sitting on places like IFAB, making absurd rules about getting rid of, rid of the offside rule and things of that nature. So there is representation. You've had people like Michel Platini sitting there with their hands out running UEFA. So you've had player representation. And not enough, go, though. Well, maybe that's true. But I don't know what that player representation looks like because the problem is, and we keep on having this conversation, and, and you're, you are right to say that if you enjoy the World Cup spectacle, you're going to want more of it. And if you enjoy the the movement aside of the domestic power finances and looking at the World Cup and the best players playing on the best stage, I do understand that argument. But unfortunately, it's not FIFA's motivation. Arsene Wenger is the football now, so they've wheeled in to add credibility to the football proposition rather than the financial one and dressed it up in a football thinker, a brilliant football thinker's ability to be able to think his way through the football parlance of it rather than the financial one. But we look at the dynamics of how it holds together and wonder really what the main agenda is here. I think it's about getting more wealth into the various federations around the world so they can develop their players. That's what that's it's about. That's the backstory, yeah. That's and that's, back- what, that's what Wenger that, believes. That's what I, yeah. I genuinely believe it is. Okay. Well, as I say, December, we may well find out if it's going to go through because that's what Gianni Infantino has suggested, that at the World Summit in December, they will cast a vote on a biennial World Cup.